Sorry, now. Okay, so uh, Susie is going to do our demo for today. Thank you very much for showing up and doing that for us. Uh, our group is a very eclectic group of artists that do lots of different medias and different things. And I think we have quite a few people that like to do their pets and <laughs> we're much uh, welcome. Uh, also for our group, uh, Bobby's going to be sending out an email, so watch for it for the new year news for next year. Don't throw it in the trash. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this over to Susie, and she's going to uh, speak a little bit and show us some of her slides and then a little uh, video. And if you need to, if you want to ask questions, you can, or you can put them in the chat, and I will shoot them to her or, or ask them of her. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So, um, Susie, thank you, and you're well, on. Hold, hold on again, just a minute. Um, Jolene, did you pin Susie? I did. Okay, good. All right, just making <laughs> sure. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the nag is going now. Bye. I'm gonna watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi everybody. I'm Susie Rad or Susie Radonsky, but you know, Susie Rad is kind of my art name, and uh, it makes it a little bit more memorable. So as Jolene said, I do a lot of pet portraits, but I also do a lot of animal portraits. I actually have a big installation coming up at the tannery in Santa Cruz this, fr this first Friday. So if anybody is free, it's five to nine. There's going to be three different public art installations going on, all nature and very educational. So you can see some of my birds in action. That's but awesome. uh, when I'm not doing that, I'm doing mainly the pet portraits. So a lot of dogs, some cats, some of the time. And uh, how I got started, I think, you know, it, it's kind of a weird story, but about four years ago is really when I started painting animals and I couldn't figure out first what I was going to do. So I was really kind of dabbling here and there. I was walking a lot, taking walks with my really active boys and taking photos of plants and animals. And I started painting a bunch of flowers and then I kind of got a little bit bored with that. And then I started thinking, what am I going to do next? You know, I did some landscapes and then it was about the same time my, my eldest son was uh, diagnosed with autism. So I figured, you know, maybe I should do some series of autism and kind of like what an autistic child sees or how I perceive what an autistic child sees. So I did a couple portraits of my son and then I have to be honest, it made me kind of feel a little sad. And, uh, you know, my studio mate at that time, she was like, you know what, Susie, your dog makes you like glow. Why don't you just focus on that guy? And I said, you know what, why not? You know, so I took a couple photos of him. And uh, if you go later on to my webpage, you can kind of see him there. But uh, they're really like blown up of his schnauz and like just different parts of his body. So when you look at it close enough, it actually spells out his name, Max. Oh, but, uh, you know, and then that's how I kind of I put that on Facebook, you know, just sort of seeing like, you know, if anybody else really like likes it or not. And uh, one good friend of mine back on the East Coast saw it and she said, you know what, could you paint our dog and can I give it to my husband as a surprise present for Hanukkah? And I said, you know what, why not? I'll give it a shot. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of practice painting like preemptively to it, but um but that was kind of like what kickstarted the whole uh, business, you know, and then I uh, sold it to her and I had no idea how to price it at that time. And I said, you know, it was a 12 by 12 painting. I'm like, I don't know, $200, let's say. And she's like, no, Susie, it's got to be more than that. So she gave me a pretty nice tip on top of that. And then slowly from there, I kind of started figuring out how the whole pet commissioning process is going to work. Um but other than that, I'm pretty much a self-taught artist. I have not taken any classes outside of high school. I don't know if that counts, but I guess it does count because that, you know, some of the theories that I use for painting these, uh, these lovely beasts, I do think about some of the things that my high school teacher has taught me. But, uh, you know, there's lots of gaps in time where I haven't really painted and kind of took a break here and there. But... Um, yeah, so I think what I'm going to do next, if anybody has any questions at this point, um, I'm going to show you kind of the beginnings of the process and how that works. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point? No? No. All right, good. So uh, 
Oh, Renee, do you have one? No? Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I'm going to show you a bunch of photos, and that's really how the whole process starts. People send me photos of their dog, and we kind of narrow down from these photos the one that's going to be the big one that I'm going to end up painting. And this is Hope. This is the very first commission that I ever did. And uh, what I always do is I look for the personality of the dog. And so when people send me photos, they send me like a big digital, you know, album. And I, we kind of go through them and I ask them because I've figured out over time that a lot of times they want me to paint their favorite picture when I might find one that I think works better visually. But they, in their mind, they want to keep the memory of that dog because a lot of times, you know, these pets have passed on. And so they want to keep the kind of that youthfulness of that dog. So, so then I ask them, what is your favorite? And they kind of, you know, let me know what their favorite ones are. And then I ask them, what kind of size are you looking for? So then I kind of think about the composition. And so for this one, we did a 12 by 12 and this is hope. And then I'm always looking, you know, at the coloring of the dog too. And, uh, We'll kind of get to the coloring a little bit later, but you know, mainly I want to just say here is when you look at this dog, you know, most people say, you know, that's like a white dog with a little bit of brown. But when I see these dogs, I don't see just white. I see a lot of different undercolors and it's really hard to see like through all these zoom kind of, but uh, there's a lot of pink I see in the undertones and like some greens and a little bit of blue, but uh, we're going to get to that in a little bit. And uh, what we're gonna do a little bit later on, we're gonna be doing a demo. I did a lot of uh, videos of this demo that I'm gonna be doing because to do an actual pet portrait, it takes anywhere from about eight hours to 12 hours, never in one setting because I have to break it down. Plus I have to break it down for drying period, like for it to dry. So we're gonna be working on Mowgli. It's a nice little pit bull here. And uh, Mowgli is actually going to be the fifth commission I've done for the same lady. And uh, basically what, how people have found me in the past is, uh, you know, I said it on Facebook and it's been kind of like that group of friends. So I kind of think of it kind of like an onion, right? So it's like, first of all, those friends kind of reached out to me. Then those paintings get finished, they hang them on the wall. And then their friends, are like, oh, wait, where did you get that? And I have a dog or I have a cat or I have a bird. And then, so I do kind of commissions for the friends of the friends. And now it's kind of going to that outer loop where people are finding me on Instagram. I'm trying to put a lot of videos, in-process videos, more time-lapse of kind of the pet, pet painting process. So now I have a gentleman that found me just on Instagram that I'm doing six cat commission for, so. It'll, it's going to be awesome. fun. So that's kind of how people have found me. And this is, again, a friend of mine. And she is asked me to do another pit bull for her. So I've done four pit bulls for her and one uh, bird for her, a hummingbird. And these are all Christmas presents. So Mowgli, the one, the photo that I showed you previously, is going to be another Christmas commission, my last Christmas commission that I'm doing for this Christmas <laughs> because I'm pretty much booked until the end of the year. Uh, and then, like I said, you know, we, with the whole pet painting process, this lady, she sent me two photos, which actually worked out really great because the painting itself, this is Dooney. I'm really focusing kind of, I love this angle of the dog. It's straight on and it's looking right at you. And it's got a really beautiful wet nose and this, the eyes. And then she wanted to kind of get more of that lovely fuzzy beard in there. So we used this second photo to get a lot of those nice like oxide colors, that nice little beard going on. So that's Dooney. That'll and be then, a fun uh, one. That, yeah. And then this was another one that I did, Maggie, another open mouth. The open mouths are a little bit more challenging. And that's what you're going to see in a little bit with Mowgli, too. Mowgli is an open mouth. So there's a lot of drool. There's a lot more uh, texture elements going on in there. So we're going to go over that a little bit later when we could do the video portion of uh, Mowgli over here. And then I also painted a Great Dane. This is Kiwi. And like I said, a lot of these dogs, they have passed away and Kiwi is also one of them. But, uh, you know, we always try to find the photo that best represents that memory of them, how they want to remember that pet by. And of course there's cat lovers. And most of my work is 
dogs, but I have pumpkin here. And what I'm going to try to do here, I'm going to try to pull up now the finished paintings of these photos that I just showed you. So you can kind of see um, the whole process of them. Um, let me find it if I can find it. Now you're going to be patient with me because this is the part where yeah. there we go. So here is Charlie. This is one of my, I asked people in the very beginning if they could just send me photos just so I could practice outside of my own dog. So this is my brother's dog. Um, this is Charlie. And to begin the whole pet process, I actually did all the photos for Charlie. I took a, about a 50 different photos. And when I asked people to send me their photos, I'm like, please send them all to me because I'll use different elements from different photos to capture like the right light of the eye or just enough of the shine of the nose or just different coloring of the fur. And uh, the whole process really begins by those photos. And once I have those photos, then um, in the very beginning, like I said, I started, uh, you know what, for the sketch, um, I basically used a grid. And I don't know if everybody's familiar with the grid, but you just put down a grid on the actual photo and then also draw a grid on the canvas. And then I would just draw out those parts that I saw within that grid. But then as business kind of picked up, I got a little busier and I needed to move a little quicker. So I decided, to use a projector. So I initially project the image. And then after it's projected, um, I'll go back and in the video that I'll show you, you can see me freehanding a lot of the details, like a lot of the teeth or just different elements of the fur and the places where there's gonna be wrinkles or some like more significant amounts of fur. So that's kind of how the whole pet process starts. And then, uh, we have Hope. This was that very first commission that I did. And again, here you can see it. Like I said, it was hard to see in the photo, but around the nose, you can see those little elements of pink and then blue. And then we have a little bit of lime green. So when I first start painting, it kind of comes out like really modern. And I'll send people updates as I go along so they can kind of be on that photo journey with me. And when they first see that element, they're like, holy smokes, like this is not what I signed up for. This pet is like too bright or too modern for my taste. And I'm like, just hang on. Yeah. Because once I start adding the fur, which is more like the true color, it's going to blend it out. And it's just going to slightly peek through just to give that vibrancy to that dog or to that cat. And here is that uh, other pit bull that I did. Here's Diamond. Really nice. Really nice. That's got those those eyeballs this is again that uh the series of four pities that I'm doing for the same lady and here is pepper that I did for last Christmas and pepper unfortunately just passed away so it was like a it was a present to one of her kids who are now adults they all they're a big pit bull family so <laughs> they love their pities and here's Dooney. He's the, here's the one that I kind of combined two photos into one. So you can kind of really see what I was using, that, that nice shine of that nose. And I loved keeping this one center and looking right at you because I think it gives it the best personality. And here's that uh, open mouth with Maggie. And uh, again, Maggie was a little bit of an older dog. And you're going to see it too with, um, with Mowgli that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. But Older dogs, I tend to use a little bit warmer colors. And of course, this is a golden, so it's kind of a given that there's going to be more of warmer colors. But you can kind of mainly see on the teeth, they're a little bit on the brownish side. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when we age a little bit. So we're especially with our pets. And then, you know, with the, with the younger pups, Mowgli is just a puppy. So he's still got really bright, bright teeth and bright fur. So... And then we got that Great Dane Kiwi here. And a lot of times if people give me a photo with a collar and it has the tag on it, a lot of times the tag does not just specifically say their name. It has, you know, their rabies information and all this other stuff. But I do not paint those details. But I do ask people if they want me to put the dog's name. So you can kind of see at the very bottom on the tag, you can see the IWI. 
And I do also paint on all four sides of the canvas, or I should say five sides, right? Because we have the front side and then the four side sides. So the, the actual tag and more of the body is on the underside. So that way people can decide if they want to frame it or not. And they could just hang it as is on the wall. And then they'll be able to see kind of, you know, more of a 3D effect of the dog by it being painted on all of the sides of the canvas. And last but not least, we've got pumpkin rightly the named. Five are wonderful. <laughs> So, and this guy was a commission that I did for a gentleman in Colorado. So I do send them also, and uh, that's part of the commissioning process and uh, that I do send. I actually just sent a, a painting to overseas. So this is the first time <laughs> it's been interesting. Yeah. Wow. But uh, those are kind of the before and after. Um, and now I'm back. <laughs> Great job. Those are just really, really photorealistic looking. And I love your undertones. When you, you really look closely at your photographs then to see yeah. the shadow under color and um, you don't exaggerate it much. I do a little bit and I give myself like a, a lot of times people feel like I don't give myself wiggle room, but I don't follow it like to a T, you know, like, but I do, the initial stage is really exaggerated because that's like those undertones that I put down and that's right. kind of like the vibrancy that I want it to peek out and for people to see. Um, but then I'm like a little bit loose, like I don't paint the exact fur that's on the painting, you know, I kind of loosen up in that re regard, but it still gives it that more of a, like a realistic view or neorealistic view is what I've learned recently. Somebody gave me that <laughs> tip that I should say, I should call my art neorealistic. So <laughs> it sounds very artsy and, you know, very fancy. So I kind of like that. But um, is there any other questions? Because if, uh, if you're ready to move on, I'm going to show you, I put together, like I said, a, a little bit of a video this yeah, is funny stuff of right on to that. And uh I have everybody in in the chat room. So perfect. Um, if somebody shouts out something, I can also I can shout it out to you. Okay. They want to know what type you're acrylic medium, right? Yes. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. That's okay. Do you have a, a certain brand or do you I do use Liquitex? So this is kind of like the main stuff that I really love to use. You use the, and, uh, the more liquid one than the than a thicker. Liquid. Yeah, I use just like the regular, not not the the heavy body, just mm -hmm. the regular body, and it gives it like some of the colors are definitely more transparent than others, mm -hmm. so it almost gives it more of a watercolor feel. And once nice. you know, I show like the video, you'll see that I do a lot of almost watercolor techniques just oh. to kind of build up the shading element. Um, but yeah, I, I love the, the use of acrylics because it dries so fast too. And I do move pretty quickly when I paint. And uh, with the painting itself, it's it's about eight hours in um, right now. So I wanted to kind of show you all more of the process of how I get to where I am. And, um, and then if we have some time, then I'm going to paint the nose with you guys. And you'll be able to see kind of how I do that part. So yeah <laughs> she does pet portraits which that makes it really interesting see cool yeah. right, diana you want to mute yourself please Oops. all right was there yeah no she's she did okay okay you can go you can go <laughs> okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be talking over this video. Um, there's a lot of time lapse and there's a lot of regular video. And the regular video, I kind of advance slightly and the time lapse, I slow down a little bit. So it's about 15 minutes of what's comprised of, like I said, about eight hours worth of painting so far. So. Excellent. Yes.
So this is my Mowgli portrait, and this is actually a really quick shot of my uh, palette, which is usually quite messy. This is actually a true like way how it looks, but um, yeah. So again, this is the initial um, what I did when I had done it inside of the, the projector, but here I am freehanding a lot of those details in there. And uh, you can see that I'm trying to figure out the different lines, meaning the gum lines and also reflections and different textures. And there's a lot of different elements to the mouth that I ever thought that there would be. I feel kind of like a dentist trying to figure out what is going where. And I'm also shadowing out a lot of the dark spaces. Um, and also navigating, basically setting myself up like for a map of where I'm going to be painting. And, uh, I think about it a lot like uh, paint by color when you were kids. So I'm kind of mapping out those areas of where I'm going to put those colors, but I kind of make up the colors as I go in my mind. Because, uh, you know, I don't really know ahead of the time, like those paint by colors, they have one, two, three, and assigning a color. So I really just do assign the color as I go. Uh, and here, again, I'm just trying to figure out the texture now of different parts of the gum and kind of see how those gums of dogs tend to be kind of very rubbery and a little bumpy at some point, but nice and smooth. There's a little reflection point right there. And then I'm also trying to figure out the bottom of the jawline of the dog. It's really hard to see in the photo. If the photo itself didn't quite capture it, but it's very, very visible there. And then also this dog has lovely, nice, like wrinkles in the first. So here I'm trying to- Susie, you're out. echoing a little bit. Uh, do you have both of your speakers on or, or two speakers on by your, yeah. um, or just one? Let me see. You are not now. When I think when your video is running, it seems like you're echoing a little bit. Maybe that's unavoidable. I don't know. I did turn it off. Yeah. Maybe if I stop the share and try again. Okay. We'll deal with it. Oh, let's see. So I only have, let's see, video. So I'm turning the sound off of the video. Hmm. Do you have a secondary? Um, I only have one camera one, going. One camera going, okay. Sorry. Just no, off. I'm sorry. Um, we could try it again. So, is it going to help if I talk a little louder or? Yeah, yes, it does. Okay. Okay. So here you can kind of just see like me finishing up a lot of the, the highlights of the dog and kind of like the creases. And here's the final uh, map of the dog and here. Oops, I wanted to stop this. And you don't have any I wanted to show you guys the, the, the pencil. Sorry? You don't have any problem painting over the pencil line? Not at all. It, it, you know, it is actually the acrylic hides it really well, which is nice. And, uh, you know, if, if there's going to be like a color that I know off the top of my mind that is like translucent, I'll kind of erase parts of the, the drawing just so that it doesn't come through because it ends up adding a lot more paint to it that I originally wanted. Gotcha. Um, but here, this is kind of like the beginning of that modern phase of the dog. So these are the colors that I use. Um, just for this specific painting. Um, so you, you see that I have a really dark purple, a really dark blue, a red oxide, a lighter blue, and this cadmium orange hue. And all of these colors you're gonna see 
pop on to the canvas um, as I go along. And here I'm just really highlighting again, um, going back over my map and here I'm using that really dark purple and here I'm trying to like block out those darker shapes of the nose. And this brush is my favorite brush. It's called the scrubber brush. And what pet does not like to be scrubbed and what artist doesn't like to fix their art. So the scrubber brush helps me to kind of refocus that line because a lot of these dark lines you're gonna see once I add those layers, they're gonna pop on through. And they're also kind of the border helping to hold those pieces or those shapes in place. And uh, pink is the one and only color that I kind of cheat on because uh, it's not like a bright modern color. But what happens with the pink is that I add a lot of color on top of the pink. I end up adding a lot of purples and blues and sometimes some greens to kind of give that nice wet tongue effect or even that effect in those ears. And um, when we get a little bit further here, you're gonna see some of the other colors. And what I try to do in this phase, I'm trying to paint every inch of that white canvas so that not a little speck is even peeking through. And um, that actually helps to set those undertones for once I actually go in there. And here, you know, I, I typically try to not use uh, a, a true black or a true white. So I'm using a really dark blue to get those shades in the mouth and also to get those crevices of the jaw and in between the teeth and along the gum line. And um, those dark colors are really nice because you can mix some other colors on top. And then uh, here I'm highlighting some of those nice pieces of the dog and those nice wrinkles that are kind of on the belly. And here you can see me starting to kind of fluff it out a little bit. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm already starting to think about how the fur is going to fall on the dog. So you want to be, you want to be the fur and you want to paint in the direction of the fur. And then you also want to use the brush well in the direction of that fur. So I'm already, you know, with the undercoat, I'm already kind of mentally practicing those strokes with my with my hand. Um, and here, you know, I, I do use a lot of lavender and a lot of light blue. Those are one of my favorite colors for undertones. And uh, you can see me kind of going in there using a lot of that. And also this red oxide, it's not a true brown, but it's kind of this illusion of a brown, which will kind of, uh, those layers will go on top. And here you can see me starting to use a lot of that watercolor effect and that uh, lighter colors. Um, I do water down the paint quite a bit just to kind of uh, get those undertones down there and those shadows and those nice wrinkles and the shades of the dog. And a little bit of yellow oxide up there just to get that reflection of that smooth head that kind of curves around the eye. And here I've mixed some white with a really light blue because the dog is not truly white in my eyes and a lot of these dogs they're lap dogs so here it's a little tricky because I have this guy on my lap and uh, it helps me actually paint a lot of eyes and noses and uh, here is kind of a quick um, time lapse video of how I do the eyeballs and then the next eye is going to be a little bit slower so you can kind of see that process more I do a lot of um, like I said, I don't like to use true black and I don't like to use true white. So a lot of times this black looks black, but it's actually mixed with a raw umber or a burnt umber. And I feel like it gives the dog a little bit more realistic view. And here I'm doing now the second eye with a little bit of a slower pace, uh, just so you can kind of see how I do it. Again, it's that black mixed with the umber and uh, it's giving that nice, kind of shape to the eye. And then I'm gonna go back and fill in that pupil. And what I do is I leave a little speck of white because I try, like I said, to cover the whole canvas with color. 
but there's just a little bit of an indication of where I'm going to leave a reflection. So I need to wait until it dries to actually put that reflection into the eye. So that's going to happen a little bit later. But there's that scrubby brush again, and uh, it helps me kind of fix my little mistakes. And here's that nice uh, burnt umber that I'm using, and it's giving that eye outline. And, uh, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to use a couple different colors, a little bit of shading to get under that eyelid to give that kind of 3D appearance of the eye. And then I'm going to go in there with this nice cream color. It's a titanium unbleached and um, there's no true white to the eye. So there's a little bit of this uh, titanium as the underbase. And then I will go on top and I'll put a little bit of white um, kind of reflection on there just to kind of give that glistening eye appeal. And after I'm done with this part, then I'm going to go in there and I'm going to use some yellow just to get that eye going or eyeball going. So this is kind of a yellow oxide mixed with a little bit of brown. And then I'll go in there with some medium yellow hue just to kind of give it a little bit of a brighter appearance. And then I sometimes dry the brush off the paint so there's no paint on it and I kind of mix those colors together. And then I also have a lovely paint that I love to use. It's, um, it's like a metallic paint. And in just a little bit, you're gonna see how I go in there with the metallic paint, but I always try to kind of fix up those edges before I go in there with the last bit of paint. And then here's that golden metallic paint. And this paint is wonderful because there's actually metal flakes in there. So when the sun catches it right, it actually has that nice glimmer to it. And a lot of times when you know you hang it on the wall and you walk by it, it looks like the dog is really looking at you. So that's an excellent kind of, idea. Yeah, so that, that's a really fun thing. And then I use the same metallic paint for if there's a collar you know, for the tags. So I have a silver metallic, I have a bronze, and then I have uh, the gold. So that, and then I mix it sometimes because sometimes the eyes appear more like auburn. So, but it's really fun just to kind of give it that, that 3D appearance in that regard. And I'm almost done with this part. And as you can see, I've already started to put a background color on it. And I take about three layers of background color and the whole painting itself in the end will have about three layers on it. How do you um, define your background color? Do you do that beforehand or? Yeah, I do it beforehand, all the background color. So this is kind of like the background. As you see, that's kind of the, the palette. And this part is now kind of really advanced because uh, it's just, it's the mouth. And this part is the part that really takes quite a bit of time. So it's kind of set on the, the fast mode here. Um, but you can see how I blend a lot of those. That tongue. Like soft purples and pinks together and then different reds. And again, I come back with the blues. And then I use a different variety of brushes. I use like round brushes. I use flat sable brushes. And then I have my favorite brush, which is a little like a bristle brush. I'll show that to you in a little bit. Um, but it's got five bristles on it. It's like a nice little comb and it gives those nice pointillism feel to it and nice little fur feel to it. And uh, this is going to blow out. And then uh, I always think about how I'm going to layer the dog because I have to think about what is sitting on top of what's the, 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 the top layer and what's the bottom layer. So typically, there's like a process. So I do the eyes first. And after the eyes, I do a mouth. And then I do either the ears or the body of the dog. Because when you think about it, like the top of the ears where the head meets the ears, a lot of that fur is going to come over the ear. So you want to have the ears finished before that you pull that fur over the ear. And that's the same with the, with the jawline. And as you see, I do a circus. I I flip my painting all the time. I don't paint like a traditional painter. I have it on my lap. I flip the dog upside down. I flip it sideways. I flip it right side up, just and, so that I and can all get all of this you're talking about is your underpainting, right? 
Yeah, and also just turning physically the canvas around. So, so that way, like I'm sticking to that rule of being the fur and thinking like right. that brush. And so I want to get the right direction of the fur. So that's, uh, that's the whole. Oh, and here, this is a nice cue for me. See where the treat goes. So this is, I made a mistake. And I don't know if you can see it, but here I'm trying to fix it. Kind of using my brush as kind of a reference point for perspective. And I do need to move the mouth over a little bit so it kind of matches that under part of the nose, that little spiky part of the nose that goes down. And then this next phase, I'm gonna to start to get into uh, the fur. And here you can kind of see those nice watercolor effects. And the best thing really is when it's nice and wet and I kind of, build on those wet layers and it helps me kind of drag those fur. Now you can see my favorite brush. This is my fur brush and this has four bristles on it. So while I'm not painting one fur at a time because people say to me, it must take you like hours and millions of hours. And I said, well, I do it in like four times the time because I have four little bristles that help me create the impression of that fur or feathers. So. Here I am, I'm getting everything really nice and wet. And on top of that, those wet layers, I'm re kind of putting to life again, those darker spots because they will be painted on top and they'll kind of be blended together. So it all smooth itself out. Cause right now those kind of impression of wrinkles are a little bit more like rigid or a little bit like brighter, but they'll, they'll mellow out in just a little bit. And, here I'm a lot of times mixing the white with the blues or mixing the white with like this uh, titanium or this uh, unbleached titanium color or like a cream kind of color. And uh, as you see underneath the tongue, there's, I see a lot more warmer colors on that side of the painting or that side of the photo. And I'm trying to give that nice warmer color impression there with a lot of these brush strokes. And, some of my brush strokes are a little bit long, but um, when I go back on the second or third um, layer, then the strokes get much shorter because of course pit bulls, they have nice and short fur, whereas other dogs like a schnauzer, they have really long fur. So, but it's, it, you know, as long as it stays a little bit wet, it helps to kind of drag that fur a little bit further. And here it's again, that advanced, or the uh, time lapse where it's that really quick breast strokes of the, of the fur of the dog. And then I'm going in and getting some little highlights to the mouth. There's a nice little texture there where the, the black lip meets the fur. And uh, now I'm gonna leave it here because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna to go to the live portion of this painting. And uh, I just leave it sideways because what I do, like I said, I like to uh, paint on the side of the painting. So here we got Mowgli and you can see kind of, I did the side here. And then of course, you know, all the sides are painted on. And when I actually sign this piece, I'll actually sign my name on the side because I feel like, yes, I would love to have it on the front cover, but uh, I think it's, you know, a little classier for a pet portrait just so that people could see their dog. And then if they're on a side angle, then they'll see my name. But um, very nice. Yeah. So Are what I'm going to do in like on the slope of something or. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you didn't sign it. I go, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. I just put it on the side. I put like Susie Rad and then uh, I put the ear and then. I always put like hearts for the for the zeros or sometimes I put paws on there. So that's cute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah, little that's, cheesy. That's creative. That's not cute. That's really creative. <laughs> and so what I wanted to show you guys before I start really going into this, these are my favorite brushes. These are these nice, um, I don't know if you can how closely you can see them, but you can see these different bristles. So this is kind of a softer brush. And they come like that. And they come like that. And originally it started, um, I inherited a lot of my mom's art supplies. She actually made this brush. <laughs> and this is the brush that started my 
initial paintings of my dog and those beginning dog portraits that I did. So she actually went in there and took a fine scissors and cut out all that little fur. So, but this one is better for bigger paintings. Most of my pet portraits tend to be on the smaller side. That's kind of what people are interested in, or maybe that's what they can afford. So, but if they get bigger, then, uh, then it's this brush. And if it's smaller, then I use this smaller kind of comb-like brushes. Do they have a, is that a brand on there? It is, um, but I don't think I can see it anymore. But I think, uh, you know, I, I think I just bought it from, what's that one store? Uh, Dick Blicks. Dick Blicks. If you look for like a fur brush, something along probably, that line. That's probably exactly what it is. Yeah, it, that's kind of what I think it was. But um, yeah, that um, I've used them so many times now, I cannot actually see anymore where they're from. <laughs> and um, and the brand of paint you used was? Uh, the Liquitex. Liquitex. And yeah, again, this is the Liquitex paint. And then I use like stable brushes. A lot of the brushes I use are kind of like, this is a really thin brush. This helps with a lot of whiskers and a lot of those fine details of fur and mainly pulling the fur off of the actual like dog and onto the background color. And that background color we pick together with the, with the people who really want, you know, either like a favorite color of theirs or they leave it up to the artist, which is always fun because I try to find another color that I see in the fur of the dog. So, but here, this is kind of my palette. And these are the colors that we're going to use for this nose that we're going to start painting. And what I'm going to do, I'm sorry, I'm going to flip this to my video. Camera, just a second. Here we go. My USB camera. So, is there any questions too before I start going into this guy? Ladies or gentlemen, if you're out there, anybody have questions? They've, I've answered several of them on the on on the chat about your type of brushes and your website and that kind of thing. Okay, so, perfect. What they need. You're free to go. Free awesome. to go. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, you know, I need to like re-wet this nose a little bit. So I'm going to look in there and I'm going to start using some of this browns. And I'm going to go in there and kind of like re-highlight some of these areas. And then I see some dark coming down from here. And it's going to, again, help just to have this wetness going on. So I'm going to go back and uh, kind of go watercolor on this a little bit and add, re-add this pink again. And it's going to be kind of blended out as I keep going. And then there's some little hidden spots in the nose of the pink. And the pink on top of the brown, it already is like kind of diluting it, which works really nice. And then we have a little bit of pink going into the nose. And then there's some pink spots up here. And I kind of do a lot of tapping. And then I have a little bit of this red oxide that I like to bring back. And then I have a little bit more of this burnt umber. And you bring it down a little bit more. So by layering in these kind of thin layers, you get you're glazing the nose. Yes, yes, essentially, yes. And then I'm going to water down some of my red oxide because it's kind of uh, trying to give this shadow impression over here. And then the white that you see, the reflection, that's going to kind of go very last. And I like to use this titanium a little bit just to give a little bit of that impression because it's going to be mixed in there too and it's going to fade out the darker color a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit up here. And sometimes I don't even clean my brush in between because I like to kind of carry the color around a little bit. And there's just a lot of tapping going on. So you, you really are working kind of a pointillist kind in of- In a way, yeah, you could say that, yeah. So 
And again, I'm using now like kind of a flat head brush um, just to kind of get bigger areas painted in. And I'm trying to get rid of these white spots that I have in here. And then uh, there's a lot of this lavender in the middle, but I'm gonna put a little bit of this brown and pink up here because you can see that the nose is pretty light. This is not a typical nose, I would say for dogs, because usually dogs kind of have those nice darker black noses, but this one is nice and brown. Um, and which adds more pizzazz, I think, to the actual painting. And then I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna get a brush with more of a point to it and then kind of go in there. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of the black with brown and try to get again, a little bit of these darker areas. And they're gonna mix a little bit with the pink, which is okay. And then I'm gonna go over here and there's kind of a little cave of darkness here. And then if you see at the top, there's just a tiny bit of a black spot. And then I'm gonna bring in a little bit up here. And then I'm gonna to switch to my pointillism brush and or my fur brush again, which is this guy right here. This is my favorite brush. And this, I start just to put layer on layer and uh, I don't do it in any particular order. I just sort of start poking at it and starting to mix those colors a little bit and kind of giving the impression of those little dimples of the dog's nose. I noticed that in your other portraits and it looks, it's so realistic. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and the tongue that you have here, are you almost done with the tongue on this dog or is there still more to go? The now? tongue is pretty much done. And the yeah, thing I, you know, I still sit on it because, um, I feel like in the gum here, I feel like it's still kind of dark. And what I usually do is I'll wait a couple days and even for the fur, I'll go back and I'll really turn it into a, like a true watercolor, a water down that paint. And then I'll just put with the scrubber brush and I'll actually just put a final coat on top and it kind of like it levels it out just right. Just a so glaze. I might, yeah. I might do that with the mouth still. So I'm but still- the actual tongue looks like a real- Yeah, the tongue is gonna stay the same. Uh, I'm just thinking more about the gummy part here. So, but yeah. And then uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back to, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so a schnauzy thing just happened. My brush just <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> But I have a back the water brush. too long. What? <laughs> Even the water too long and they, they come off of the end. That's never happened yet. So, but see, I have a backup brush. <laughs> so, but the other one literally it lost its head. <laughs> All right. And so, like I again, I I I'm kind of a lazy artist. You can't quite see this, but I have my palette sitting on my lap. And a lot of times I'll even let the dog sit on the lap with me and I'll paint the nose kind of from like top down. Um, but for, for this, I'm gonna go in there and start to put in these darker spots. Again, this is a raw umber mixed with a little bit of black, but there's more of a brown element to it. One in there. You can really see your underpainting too kind of glow through. It's very, yeah. very uh, realistic looking. And then under the nose, like a lot of times the top of the nose, they have a lot of these dimply kind of things. I don't know how else to describe them. But yeah. uh, under the nose, 
under the nose there's not really a dimple it's really smooth so it kind of like swoops out from here so I kind of drag out the same fur brush and it's kind of a much smoother feel to it and the same on the other side if you hear yawning that's my dog in the background <laughs> that's not me but uh he's always with me he's always coming with me <laughs> to the studio or whatnot your muse yes exactly <laughs> and i see still some reddish here this is a red oxide Yeah, there's a lot of dog sounds in the background, so <laughs> that's my pup. <laughs> and then this nose. I'm going to go back to my rounded brush. I'm going to get in this little bit of a darker outline. And then the dots will go on top of it. It gives it that nice dimply impression. And how many hours do you usually spend on your portraits, do you think? Um, I think anywhere from like 8 to 12 hours, maybe 16. It depends on the size. This is an 8 by 10, so mm -hmm. it's a little smaller. It's usually done a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a good ballpark. And like I said, I... I Typically, I cannot do it in one setting. I need to take breaks and uh, yeah, yeah, kind of let it sit, and then I come back and I and I can kind of see things that I want to change. Like you saw me kind of fix yeah. them up in here because earlier it only had come up to this point, so I need to just show the whole mouth in there, like it's here. I think we all, as artists, do that. Go yes. look at it from another day or walk away. Usually. Exactly. And usually, in, like I said, as I go along in the painting process, I do send photos to the to the folks as I go along, just so that they kind of like see. And part of it, too, is like uh, I love to get the feedback. And even, you know, if there's something like I had painted a one dog and they didn't really like like some fur because the fur was in the photo but they're like I don't want this fur here so it kind of gives an opportunity for them to kind of like adjust it to how they really want to see it and it's you know it's kind of taking a risk because they're really involved yeah. in the painting process but at the same time I feel like it's worth it because I really want to give you know them yeah something what, there. how they best remember their dog you know so if there's like a tuft of fur that just so happened to be in the photo but they didn't want it to be highlighted then I'll I'll adjust it so this is their child if somebody is painting have exactly. paint for a <laughs> it's the fur baby the fur baby <laughs> I let somebody see a, a, a it was a, a town that they went to and they wanted to change the entire thing I go it's painted I can't it's watercolor I have yeah. to paint it again <laughs> watercolor is tough yeah <laughs> I can't paint over this that was, that was a, I didn't feel the same way about feedback. <laughs> oh yeah. And I just sort of like fell into the whole feedback thing. I never really thought I would do it. And everybody was like, oh, you're taking a big risk and you know, you're going to like get a lot of angry people or whatever. But you know, I just said. They picked the, they picked, you picked with them the picture first. Yeah, we pick it together and you know, it's just, it's kind of like an evolving process. You know, I don't. I want to try to, you know, capture the dog as best as I can, yeah. as hold it in their memory or, you know, in real life still. Wow, that nose is just really moving like it's going to move. <laughs> and then I'm going in here kind of with that cream color. Actually, I was watching one time a video on YouTube to figure out how to paint fur. And uh, 
or just to kind of give that complexity to the fur. And they always said to think in rules of three. I wish I remember who it was because it kind of like, I watched this a couple of videos and then they just started painting the fur. <laughs> so, but so the rules of three is like, you think about what three colors do you see in that section that you're painting at that time? So right now, you know, we see, I see a lot of lavender, I see a lot of pink and I see a lot of brown. So that's kind of my, my top three that I'm going and then I'm mixing a lot of these colors. You can kind of see it here as I start to mix it together with the brown and the pink and then a little bit of brown and the lavender here. Gotcha. So I start to kind of combine those three. That's kind of this triad of colors. You're making a transition between colors that's softer, yeah. Yeah, and to get, kind of give it that, that depth of that nose. Um, exactly. And then I'm going to go back to my fur brush. I don't know the technical name of the brush, but that's what I that's think fur brush is perfect. <laughs> and I'm going to go in there. I'm going to mix a little bit of pink with this uh, with this off white, this unbleached titanium. And I'm going to start to go in there and give it some of this. Uh, reflection. I need to wet it a little bit because it's a little dry. It's sitting here for a little bit. But then if I wet it, I kind of start to get a little bit more of that watercolor feel. And I'm really just pressing it super gently now, trying to get that lighter color in there. And then I'm going to mix the white at the end for the top kind of up here you can see the kind of more of a whitish reflection and i'm going to use the same color down here and it's just kind of there's no uh true logic to it it's not any more paint by number it's just uh you're referring to your painting or your photograph yeah yeah, yeah. so it's just sort of looking at I'm like, oh, it needs a little bit of uh, red oxide now for no reason, but I see a little smidge right down here in the corner. I'm gonna put that in there. I think that, I, I don't remember the artist that I heard this from, but they said the, the longer that you look at something and squint your eyes or take off your glasses and look beyond, you start seeing the colors more. Oh, yeah. So here I, I'm mixing now lavender with brown and a little bit of that cream and kind of going in here in the center of the nose. You can see it up at the top also. And I have nice, really dark purple peeking through. And when I'm finished with this painting, I will send it to you guys so you can kind of see the very end process. That'd be great. We will put it on our website. And then I'll also continue doing my time lapse videos. Um, this is a secret prize or not prize, I should say present. So I have not yet put it on my Instagram page, but once uh, it's gifted, then I'll be putting it on the Instagram page. Yeah. Understood. Yes. Nobody <laughs> share this. <laughs> like I've been so busy, but I can't share it with anybody. I feel like Mrs. Claus over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I still see a little sneaky white peeking through right here. I'm going to go in and get that darker color in there. I'm going to re-highlight the bottom. And it comes all the way around. I need a little bit more. And now I messed up a little bit. So I got my scrubby brush. Because like I said, what dog doesn't like a little bit of scrubbing? I'm sure cats too. And this actually helps to blend it in a little bit too. So now I'm going to go back and use a really fine brush 
and uh, sneak some of that darker purple in there again, just to give that crease of the nose. So this is a really dark purple. Uh, this is a dioxide purple. And uh, kind of re-giving that impression of the nose. And if you see, there's a little bit of wrinkles kind of coming from there. So I'm going to just give that impression, almost like a plant. It's like the little leaves that are coming off the plant. Um, oh, yeah. Of a plant. So it kind of comes off the nose just a little bit. And then when I add again those polka dots, then it's going to start to disappear that crease. So it won't be so purpley. It'll tone it down a little. And I'm trying to go for a lighter, creamy color now. And to accentuate this nostril. And there's some pink up here still that I need to re-add. And there's That nose is starting to come out a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit more lavender. It comes all the way up above the nostrils a little. And then I'm going to start to put in a little bit of that white impression. And this is a little bit of white mixed with lavender and some pink. I'm going to water down the brush so I have more of a faint impression. There's some lighter spots here. A little bit coming up from this part of the nose and under the nose. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it makes it start to pop out a little bit more. It rounds it big time. I, I, saw, I found some of these brushes that like that they're called sawtooth brushes. Ah. There are quite a few that are made for painting on fingernails, which but they look like the one you're using. There is, there is um, some that are uh, on eBay and some that are, I just Googled. I think, yeah, even on like Amazon, I think I found yeah. them or even on Michael's perhaps. Yeah, but, but it seems that there's called sawtooth brushes, like a, you know, like okay. a, a saw. Yeah, thanks for finding that out for me. Yeah, I, this one, uh, let me see if I go to the site. This one looks like it's a paintbrush for artists. And it says crimper pigments. I'll post it on our um, chat line if people want to. Yeah, uh, perfect. I feel like I need to go a little darker on this edge. Here. Again, this is not a true black. It's uh, black again mixed with a uh, little bit of a raw umber. And in here, there's a kind of a really darker spot. So this is going to be a little bit more true to black.
And I see that I need to still lighten up the nose just a tad. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of white, a little bit of lavender and some cream. That's the color. And it kind of comes up a nice upside down U shape. Again, really gentle tapping. A little reflection over here. Wow. <laughs> that one is a little bright, so I'm using, I just totally dried off the scrubber brush and I'm just gonna pat it just so that it kind of blend in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna go with my fine brush. I'll go back over this purple a little bit. Dark brown. And then I'm gonna pull that across with this no paint on the brush, just kind of a slightly moistened brush. And your paint is still wet. My paint is still wet, but it's already starting to dry. It dries pretty quick. So I'm gonna add a little bit of paint to this side. And then uh, almost there. Yeah. And we're about 10 after five. Okay. So that was good timing. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> this was very, very interesting. Uh, uh, your layers, I didn't realize how many really layers you have on that nose. Yeah. And is your, when you do your fur, are you that um, many layers on the fur also? The same thing. So like, you know, I'll use the same brush. I don't right. have they're right in colors here but like oh, no, that's fine i just you know but yeah, it's the same the same kind of process or the same kind of theory behind it is that same layering you know is going so you on you go in you go in with your your fur brush <laughs> your sawtooth brush, fur brush. <laughs> over the top of your underpainting and then you yeah. sometimes soften it out with with your bigger scrubby brush huh exactly yeah so, to do that blendy watercolory thing yes that's, that's a that, you know like in high school that's mainly i only did watercolor i wanted to learn oil um but my art teacher was allergic to oil so i only learned watercolor so uh oils i picked up and acrylics i picked up and so i kind of cheat and i kind of use some of those watercolor techniques for the water i paint acrylic like a watercolorist i do light to dark i i don't do the dark to light it, I can't figure that out. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so now I have just like this single brush. It's a really fine brush. Mm -hmm. I can see it. Um, and you said that was a sable brush? Yeah. And what I do is this is called Princeton Select. It's a zero slash eight. So it's a very. And it has that funny little angle on it. That's kind of nice, huh? Yeah, and I think it's partly my fault because I warped it now. <laughs> no, but they're they make brushes that have like a just like a yeah, so it it, ha it does yeah, it kind of has. And so with this brush, um, you know, with the four fur brush, it kind of gives it more of a loose feel. But with this brush, I can really go in and give it more of that finer little spots that I want to kind of. The put in there. The like I, I'll sneak some in that are not even per se in the photograph, but just so that there's like that, that darker background coming through. So it kind of gives it more of that wet doggy nose feel. So, and it just kind of nicely spaces it out. So, yeah, that's almost there. So, well, I have to say, Susie, this has been really great. I love all these little tricks and tips that you've uh, are a little bit different than 
somebody else that does it a different way, you know, that a traditional way. Yeah. I don't feel, I don't feel so alone now. <laughs> I'm totally a traditional because like I said, I don't have a no, you're, background you're in it. You're but neo-realistic. It's, <laughs> it's more winging it on the fly. <laughs> Well, does anybody have any questions or uh, remember she's this Friday is your show? This Friday is an installation at the Tannery Art Center in How downtown Santa Cruz. Is. And it's from five to nine. Just and it's, the, it's during the day, it's from five to nine at night. And then it's again gonna be during our winter market on December 10th and that's 10 to five. And my project is called Bird Quest. So I've done birds that are native to the San Lorenzo Riverbed, which is our riverbed that comes through Santa Cruz. And, and it's Costco kind of, huh? Yes, exactly. And so it's a it's a scavenger hunt. So you got to find them and then they'll have a QR code and you can read about the bird and then you'll hear the bird song. Oh, and, and if you find all five birds and you photo them, then I will be wearing wings. You have to come and find me and then you're going to get a prize. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah yeah i used to uh go to the tannery when it was a tannery oh really <laughs> buy leather <laughs> yeah i've been there a little over a year now that's where my studio is now working from my my home office because uh my internet is really bad there so and i wanted to have a good connectivity yeah. with you guys so well gosh thank you i mean this is well, thank you i really appreciate it so and uh, thank everybody for tuning in for this. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording unless somebody has a, another, everybody's. Oh, oh well, somebody the wanted to know if, yeah, you will. Yeah. Yes, I do. I put like a finishing coat on it, a nice transparent coat that protects it so that it'll hopefully have a longer longevity. Do you use a gloss or a? Uh, it's mainly like a, it's like a, like, yeah, it's a gloss. Yeah. It's kind of like a matte gloss. It's kind of a combo between. So, but it definitely, you can see the ones that have been kind of putting that final coat on versus the ones that don't have it. So, yeah, yeah. It just makes them last a little longer, a little more. Yeah. And I mean, I, like I said, I've been only doing them for four years, pet portraits. So I'm not sure how long they truly last, but hopefully it'll last longer is the, the goal. <laughs> so. And you use your just a, a regular canvas. Yes, I use a regular canvas. And, uh, you know, I've been experimenting a little bit on uh, cigar boxes. I've been painting oh. on those too. So not so much pet portraits, but more bird. And you address all that? And Perfect. I don't actually, I paint straight on the box. And then, uh, and then of course I put that final varnish on top to protect it, so. You might, you might try gessoing it lightly to keep it from getting moisture from underneath. Mm -hmm. The, um, if somebody, you know, like if the bottom of the box is or, or whatever gets. Um, yeah, I don't paint the whole box though. I just paint the image so that you can still see the wood, but you mean underneath well, the image? Yeah, well, oh, it's a wooden box. Yeah, it's a wooden box. I gotcha. Oh, so, wow. A wooden cigar box. So. <laughs> and I did not smoke the cigars, just <laughs> for the record. Just for the record. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you again, and I'm going to thank, gonna you, stop Jolene, thank you for the whole organization. I really appreciate this opportunity. It was it was great. Top can. You